Okay, so thanks, Paul, for introducing me. Um, and hi, everyone. I hope you are all enjoying the morning so far. Um, so as Paul said, my name is Jessica Hamilton, and today I'm going to give you a little bit of a talk on the New Year Plantant, which is an annual event that takes place every year and is held by the BSPI. Uh, for those of you who are not yet familiar with the New Year Plant Hunt, um, by the end of this, you should be hopefully nicely familiar and eager to take part in next year's event. So exactly what is the New Year Plant Hunt? Um, every day since, sorry, not every day, sorry, every year since 2012 even, sorry, the BSBI has run a four-day plant hunt in which the participants go out hunting for plants that are in flower. It originally originated as a fun activity to keep botanists taking over during the winter period, um, but it is now providing both interesting and important data as plants adapt to changing weather patterns. So as you can see, the, over the years, the popularity has greatly increased. Um, just going back as far as 2015, even the total list, the total number of lists submitted was only 143. Uh, and coming up now to this year's, this year's hunt that's just gone by, we had a total of 1,195 lists that were submitted. And even compared to last year, into uh, the previous year of 2020, um, that's gone from 798 up to the 1,195, which is a nice big jump, as you can see. And obviously the pandemic probably played a little role in that as well. Um, and as far as Ireland is concerned, we're doing pretty well. Um, we started out with 21 lists in 2015, jumping up to 98 this year. We have had higher numbers of lists in previous years. Um, um, so it would be great to see that number increase as the years go on, but um, overall not bad. Um, so the rules, the fun part. Um, participants picked a day between the 1st and 4th of January. Um, they had a time limit of three hours to record plants that were in flower. So this includes non-native species and naturalized species, but not deliberately planted plants. And this three hour period excluded breaks and time to travel between sites. So you had time to stop and get a coffee or whatnot, or if you were traveling between the different sites, it allowed for that. Um, in terms of what was included, so grasses, sedges and trees, and I included conifers were all included, but ferns and fern allies were not. And to be a valid record, the plant had to be fully in flower. So for example, if um, trees, the catkins had to be fully open um, and the grasses had open flowers with stigmas, and etc. on show. And the majority of records would have all been digitally submitted by, by the app, um, by your smartphone or tablet, um, or if you wanted to, you could also submit your data later on via the website portal instead. And this, um, so this, as the New Year, New Year plan hunt was going on, the presence of a live map allowed you to see your own data and also allowed to see all the other lists that had been submitted across Britain and Ireland. Um, so as well as just seeing the location of the list, which you can kind of see by all the red dots that indicates where the lists were submitted, you were able to see um, all the species that were submitted for each list. So to take, for example, my list here um, in my local village of Valley Hike, you can see the number there, which is the total number of species I recorded for that particular list and the various species I recorded, such as um, Poa Annua, Songs Asper, um, et cetera. Um, you could also see the, the longest lists that were submitted as well as the most frequently recorded species. Um, and so the, the, this interactive map was a really great feature. Not only you're able to see what you've submitted and others have submitted, um, and it really added to the old, I suppose, the inclusivity of it all. If you couldn't take part for whatever reason or whatever, you were still able to kind of be a part of it all and see what other people were recording. And also, I think it probably helped slightly with the, um, the competitiveness of it all. For example, like if you saw that someone else had recorded X amount of species in an area nearby you, perhaps it kind of um, spurred you on to perhaps go out and do another hunt and see could you beat that. And as well as being, as well as the live data coming on the map, which I showed on the previous slide, um, social media had an ever important um, role to play in both, both promoting the hunt as well as just um, keeping people up to date. I suppose the most, um, the best platform to follow the action on would have been Twitter, um, where participants or people who are following the action use the hashtag New Year Plant Hunt, and it allowed you to see what other people were finding and posting photos of and just some of the highlights from their hunts. Um, for those of you who then were not on Twitter, we have Instagram, the BSPI Instagram account, and I think it's Leaf, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly. Um, 
he runs that account and so he was keeping people up to date on that um, posting various highlights and he actually has a highlight dedicated to the new year plan hunt for those of you who are familiar with instagram you know what i mean by that and then of course we had louise marsh who every day um did really fantastic blog posts um just posting all the tallies and the highlights from the various um days so they were fantastic as well and then they would have been shared across the various social media platforms to keep people up to date with what was going on as the days went on so it's just a little kind of i suppose synopsis of my own hunt so i live in a little coastal village called bali hike um, in north kerry so for my hunt i try and encompass as many different habitat types as possible to get the widest number of species and obviously i do the same route every year just for um comparatively comparatively purposes um so as you can see there's a lot of intensively managed grassland in my area for, and for a lot of the the area I'll be traversing around. Um, so in those kind of areas, the more marginal areas of hedgerows and roadsides often offer me the best picks. Um, and they can offer you, they can, you can get a surprising amount of species along those areas, um, even at that time of year. And then as I came back into the village down here, I was able to pick up some of the, um, I suppose the coastal species. Um, there's always one thrift plant that flowers just down there every single year at the summer years. So I'm always able to try and tick that one off at least anyway. And then after that, I can come back into the village and then down here, I'll get a few more coastal species ticked off as well. Um, so it's really, it's just a really enjoyable walk that I would do most days with my dogs anyway. Um, and so you can see then, and you can also see my two dogs there on the left hand or on the right hand side even. Um, so they always come along with me as well. And they're getting quite good now deciphering the the various species of plants and sometimes even eat them as well but uh, we try and avoid that um so just overall my new year plant hunt in Belhai wasn't too exceptional i had 26 species recorded in flower um so you can see that in comparison to 2020 it was just one species less um but overall more than previous years um and i just had come of the usual suspects um you know creeping buttercup ragwort um i got my thrift plant like i said nipple wort and then the first of the spring i suppose flowers just starting to appear so i got one of the first of the few celandines that were starting to appear and primroses and such and then this is just a little kind of side tangent just as i finished my plant hunt i always finish it just at the base of the beach and i just then within like 10 minutes of finishing i got a call just to check on a uh, six seal pup and so his name was lynx um so it was nice to kind of finish the day off with that on a high and i rescued him and then he has since now recovered and been released so that was a nice little way to end the day um so overall the summary of the new year plant hunt so there were 1811 recorders who submitted overall 21419 records of 710 plant species that were in bloom and that included 1195 lists so that includes lists that had um actually no species in flower which is just as important because all data is good data in this respect um and it's just as important to know where flowers are where there are no flowers blooming as there are as to where there are flowers blooming um like in many previous years almost double the amount of species were flowering late uh 53 compared to early so this is similar to previous years and suggests that you know the majority of them are autumn stragglers that continue to flower um, in the winter due to mild weather and when we're talking about um, autumn stragglers we're just referring we're kind of referencing species like you know hogweed ragwort yarrow species who you know will often persist well beyond their I suppose normal flowering period um, if conditions are correct um, and you can just see in the top right hand side that the highest list was that was submitted was 86 species and that was from Jersey. Um, the top species, the top four species that were recorded overall were um, Bellis Pernis, common daisy, we have Senecio vulgaris, ground cell, Traxicum, we have common dandelion, um, Poa anya, meadow, oh, annual meadow grass even. Um, so for the last number of years, these have been the top four species that have been recorded across Britain and Ireland. Um, across the new year plan hunt although their um order has varied somewhat and that map that you can see on the right hand side just really just shows the distribution of the various lists across britain and ireland um and just for clarity purposes and scale i suppose to make sure it's more visible to people um each dot represents um a hectare where there has been at least one list submitted um i suppose if 
I suppose, you know, this year has, I suppose this year in the past year has been unlike any others and it's been um, quite a year. So looking at the potential effects of the pandemic on this year's hunt, um, as a whole, I suppose, verges and green areas have and been a little, bliss, little bit less intensively mown uh, with less cuts and so on. Um, just on an anecdotal note, back here in Chile, along one of the bypasses, it would have been normally cut um, weekly or at least bi-weekly. Um, and, you know, the grass kept nice and sharp, whereas last year it was cut less and we had bee orchids popping up um, and they had never been recorded there previously. Um, so it's just really nice to see what, you know, what can pop up and bloom if we just give nature a chance and just, yeah, it's just interesting to see what pops up, I suppose. Um, and what could potentially be there if we just let the grass grow really and let nature do its thing. But, um, and obviously we had no root punts this year. Um, participants were asked to follow their own local government advice and heat any restrictions are in place. Um, for Ireland anyway, we were in a level five. So that meant we had a five kilometer restriction in place and obviously no root outings. People couldn't meet up in large groups and stuff. Um, so definitely that element of the social element of all was missed this year. We all anyone that's been on a new plant hunt in the big groups um, knows how fun they are and hopefully you know next year we'll be able to get back out in large groups again and do that and obviously and the more hunts in the local areas because people couldn't travel so they were they kind of had to deal with what was right in front of them and uh, more lists were submitted this year compared to previous years and that's obviously because um, whereas if normally you might go out in a group this year you were in your own I suppose area locality and people were just submitting lists that way um, so why, I suppose, why record, even record um, plants at this time of year? I suppose one, you know, your citizen science is fantastic thing and you are submitting, you know, you're giving valuable data to science as well as, um, you know, having fun and taking part. Um, it's a really good time of year to familiarise yourself with, um, I suppose, the winter form and the different species and how they look at different times of year and look practice your vegetative ID. Um, you obviously the social element is huge you're meeting like-minded folk you're getting out um and like you're, yeah, you're getting out of the house at a time of year over christmas and new year which is when it's normally quite a crazy time so the bit of headspace and the kind of the fresh air is often welcome i'd imagine um and then it's just a quick little plug for the bsbi carry group that we run um obviously we haven't been active now in the last year and a bit now because of you know covid and the associated restrictions but uh fingers crossed we'll be able to get out on a few outings hopefully this year um in the past we've been on some really lovely rambles and you know we've been to places like the national we've been to, uh, we've been to places like the national park in clarney quite a lot and we've come across some of the many fantastic species that are ubiquitous to both clarney and Kerry in general and i've left in the top left bottom left even sorry you can see the um, the various social media um uh handles down below and then these are just some of the useful links and resources that are handy if you want to learn more about the new year plant hunt we have on the left hand side we have the new year plant hunt website itself and there's a link above there and you can from that download and read the analysis of the 2021 hunt which is a really great interesting read um and then with the link there to the bsbi blog site which i mentioned beforehand obviously you know there's the the posts there on the new year plant hunt but it's a really fantastic resource in general um just for identification stuff and just for really keeping up to date with all the different bsbi botany things that take place and then down below this is the web page for the live map, which I mentioned beforehand, and you can see the, the location of all the hunts as well as the top species um, and the, the longest lists. So I'm going to leave it at that. Um, thank you all for listening. I will leave it here with a sunset from my local beach in Ballyhaig. Um, I think just as a, a side note, if the pandemic has, you know, taught us nothing else, it's really shown us the value of, you know, what's around our noses. And I think we appreciate the small things a little bit more than we did beforehand. So, um, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for listening. 